Hi, everyone. Welcome once again to my backyard. I'm Steve Richards, one of the pastors at Messiah Church in Plymouth, Minnesota. You know, over the past few months, the themes haven't really changed as I prepare this weekly message of hope. That's because the challenges that we face collectively have not disappeared, even when the ways they impact each of us individually have changed. For example, a few months ago, the unemployment numbers were high and a lot of people were anxious, but then you lost your job and suddenly what seemed surreal became very real. Or it's your health. You've been healthy thus far. You keep hearing the statistics, those who test positive, the hospitalizations, the deaths, but until you are the one who's sick or someone you know dies, it's all surreal. We keep thinking, hoping maybe it will not happen to me. And if after seven months it has not, isn't it time to stop waiting? You know, the psalmist wrote, how long, O oh Lord, how long? I don't like waiting. I'm the guy who would rather take the next exit and meander through side streets rather than wait in traffic. <coughs> Excuse me. And how long will that take? I mean, there's no guarantee I will reach the destination any quicker. But I want to do something. So I wear my mask. I keep my distance. I stay away from indoor spaces, especially when there's a crowd of people. But it doesn't seem to make this coronavirus disappear. I'm trying. I'm doing my part. How long, oh Lord, how long? In recent days, I've had a number of conversations with people who have told me that they have waited long enough. It's too hard. The isolation, the inability to travel, the life events that have been altered, wedding plans, memorial service, family gatherings, be patient. How long, oh Lord, how long? Patience is a virtue. That means it's in you. Maybe undeveloped or underdeveloped, but it's there. God gave it to you, and it's ready to come to the surface. And what is patience? It's this quiet hope that's based on trust that in the end, everything will be all right. It's not running away from what's happening around you. It's not fighting against it, it's persevering. You know, we often think of patience when we're forced to stand in line or we're put on hold when we wanna to speak to customer service. But that's easy patience. Several years ago, my wife was diagnosed with cancer. The diagnosis caught us both by complete surprise and everything about the future was put on hold as we waited with all the patience we could muster. And when we ran short on patience, we asked others to be patient for us. It was months and years with no guaranteed outcome. How long, oh Lord, how long? We needed patience. Patience is a commitment to the future. It's doing something now so that something good will happen. In the Old Testament book of Isaiah, we find these words in chapter 40. They who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Now, waiting is not sitting around doing nothing. Waiting is working toward the preferred future. Like the athlete who runs and lifts weights and works on a positive attitude to be ready. It's like the student who studies subjects in school that seem pointless at the time, but later end up pointing that student toward their preferred future. Waiting, it is training. Sometimes hard work, it is looking inward reading, meditating, listening, so that we will have the inner strength to do what's ahead. They who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. 
And by doing so, by waiting, here's what Isaiah says your inner life will look like. He, you will mount up with wings like eagles. You will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not faint. Folks, I want that. I'll wait for that. God, let me be patient enough to wait for that. You know, these words come to us from a time in history 2,500 years ago when the Jews were forcibly removed from their homeland, conscripted as slaves for the next 50 years. And because most people didn't live beyond the age of 30, that meant the next generation. And these words of Isaiah served as hope, gave them the patience they needed to see a future when the next generation would return to a homeland they had never seen. And isn't that what we need? That kind of patience. To hope for what cannot yet be seen but will be. Yeah. Waiting is hard, but it's only in the waiting that we receive the fuel to keep on keeping on. Don't give up. Don't be weary. Because maybe, just maybe, God is waiting for you so that God can do the next great thing in your life. And that's my hope and prayer for us all. May God continue to bless you in the days ahead. See you next week.